Hey guys, new day here on the Ultimate High Boy build series. You're probably wondering yourself, what else do I have to show you? This thing is pretty much done. Well, we don't have the rear bumper here. But, look what I got. We have a Bailey bumper. These, these bumpers were made locally to me in Palm Creek, Oklahoma. Got it from a bro, uh, buddy of mine, lives in Palm Creek. He found it in his junk pile. It was a little dented up in the back here. Somebody ran into the hitch of a trailer hooking up and bent the back plate there. I got it pretty much straightened out. Pretty close anyway. Here's another one we have. It's a little rough. It's one we had. I thought about fixing it up, but it's pretty it's pretty rough. So this one is a lot better shape. The only problem with this one is it's for a 37 inch frame. So I'm gonna have to cut those mounts off and well, I'm a little narrower. The high boys are 34. I guess all the trucks are 34, that vintage. But that shouldn't be too hard. And I'll get that sandblasted and painted and put on the truck. Well, I got the bumper brackets cut off and got them everything cleaned up. They're gonna go about like that. I'm gonna bolt them on the truck and then set the bumper up there where it needs to go and tack everything and then, and then take it off and weld everything up. So last time you saw the truck, I was, uh, I just picked up a bumper. Well, I got it sandblasted and painted. Here it is on the truck. It's a little bright, but sooner, soon enough it'll be all chipped up and it'll look like the rest of the truck. It's kinda, kinda sticks out right now. It's a little bright. But I got, I sandblasted it and I just painted it with some industrial rattle can paint. We'll see how it holds up. If it gets too bad, I might, might uh, have it powder coated. But how cool is it that my license plate says 428? I did not plan that. It just came out that way. But I think I need to put some blocks in the rear. The rear is uh, two inches shorter than the front. And I have some two inch blocks. So I'm thinking I'm just going to put those in it and see how I like it before I order softer springs for the front and lower the front down. Because I don't think it needs to be any lower in the front but the back seems to be a little low. So I'm gonna bring the back end up a little bit and see how I like it. We have a uh, car show this weekend that we're gonna try to go to. It's at uh, Mid-America Dragway. We will probably see you guys out there. Here's the uh, two inch blocks that I was talking about. They're off a, they're just a stack, uh, factory block off a F-250 Super Duty. And, uh, had to put a little bit longer U-bolts in it. Had, I had to machine the bump stop tang there to clear the U-bolt. Because the block is further back to get on the pin for the leaf spring. If you remember, I had to move the axle forward to make the wheelbase right for this, uh, 67 model truck. Because this is a 73 frame. There are two inches longer wheelbase so that shouldn't be a big deal um i'm probably not even ever going to touch the bob stops so it's no big deal it, uh, still plenty strong anyway even if i do but that made it sit a lot level a lot more level and here you can see 
how I mounted the bumper. Here's that plate I had to cut off originally. It's welded on. I added this little plate here for some strength. And I had to add a little plate there because it was, I had to stick the bumper out just a little bit further. So that's how that's mounted. Rear shocks just showed up. 2.5 King remote reservoirs from PMS suspension. Got their billet clamps here for the reservoirs. Get those put on and show you how they look. Got the shocks on. I uh, discharged the nitrogen to help get put them on there so I could push the shaft up and get them on because these things are pretty stiff so I have to recharge the nitrogen thought I would show you doing that you screw that on the cap there's a Schrader valve up here like a tire screw this in to depress the the valve and I should have it set already. And it's a little high. About 150 is what I was shooting for. There we go. Easy as that. I'll get the other one done and they will be installed. So last time you saw the truck, I was getting shocks put on and uh, getting ready to head to a car show. Well, I forgot my camera to the car show, but we had a great time. Uh, took the truck out there. Truck did great driving out there. We drove, oh, it's probably only like 30, 40 minutes from here, but uh, truck did great. Had a great time. Talked to a lot of people. Uh, the uh, didn't win any awards, but there was like 500 cars there. So there's a lot of competition but anyway it was a great time especially to get the truck out and let people see it and uh, hear comments on it and stuff that's always fun but uh, I thought I, I would show what I've done to the truck uh, I've done some things it's been it's been a couple weeks since the the car show I haven't really been filming much but uh, I had had a few trucks roll through the shop I had to get those done but I'll fill you in with what I've been doing on the truck here okay if you remember I had uh, Gateway Buckshot mudder tires on them on this truck. It was they looked really good. I like the way they look, but uh, these are a little bit different. They're BF Goodrich KM3s, 750, 16 size. They're really narrow. And the reason I put these on is the Buckshots threw a lot of rocks, and uh, I got some video of that. I'll show you of the size rock. They're like walnut size rocks and uh, those were hitting the body pretty hard and uh, you know I was kind of feeling bad about chipping the paint so bad so they had to go they'll they'll go on a truck that doesn't have such a nice you know nice paint job on it you know this one's not perfect but it's not terrible so uh, we'll put those on an old farm truck or something you know and use them up uh, I wish I wish they worked out because they look good on this truck but these these don't look bad they look pretty good um, Here's some, like, there's a chip from those. There's one. Truck's kind of dirty, but there's one there, and it was even chipping right, right there's one there on the side of the truck. So it, it was pretty noisy under the cab, too. Everything, all the rocks hitting under the bed there. These, these uh, throw a lot less rock. Well, the rocks they do throw are small, smaller. You know, the, the lugs are a lot smaller little pea sized rocks versus walnut sized rocks so that's a lot better I did get the shocks on and I put some shock boots on it for pretty much the same reason throwing rocks down here on these gravel roads are the shafts I have these on the had these on my dually the shafts will get eight up if I don't know if you can see it see that axle tube all the paints all chipped off it already just from rocks being thrown So that's to protect those shocks. Put some steps on it. 
and uh, I have this cover here this is a soft top cover it's all folded up right now I thought I would do a time lapse and show you setting it up it's pretty cool I like the fact that it folds up like this and it doesn't take hardly any time you can fold it out you can roll the sides up roll the back up so you got open and you can all cl close it up like if it's raining or something so I'll get that folded up and uh, I'll talk to you about it So here it is, got it put up, didn't take long at all. It's a little wrinkly from being folded up, but it'll lay out. See, it's got this rear hatch you can open up. It's a little dusty from driving on dirt roads, but he's got that structure there that all folds up. And you can undo this back panel and undo this side panel. And they have buckles up here. You can roll this up and it looks pretty neat. The reason I got this is come in November we have a spot booked along the White Rim Trail that's on Canyonlands National Park and if you don't know it's a hundred mile trail they only let a certain people on it every day and you have to book your campsites there's a very limited number of campsites and you have to book your campsites in advance we had to book it in August and they were already almost full but we got us a campsite and we're going to have to camp in the truck one night. We have a truck camper that we camp in normally when we're on a trip. You know, the truck will be hauling on a trailer and we have a truck camper. And uh, But th one night we'll have to be camping in the back of this. So it's going to be November. It's the, it gets down to about 40s, uh, 70s during the day, 40s at night in Moab in November. And uh, wanted to have a little bit more protection than just a tent. So that's this will provide that. We'll have a mattress in the back there and have good sleeping bags and stuff. So we'll be we'll be good for one night. You can't have campfires. That part sucks. But uh, we'll have a little little heater for warmth in the evenings and it'll be fun. We're gonna take this truck on some trails in Moab and see how it does. And I'll uh, I'll be sure to take you guys along and document all that and try to get some good footage of it. But that that's where we're at right now. Uh, wasn't sure. What else I could put in this video, where to end. So uh, next time, I think we're going to do some off-road testing with the truck. Going to take it out on some of our just pasture roads and stuff and see how it does. Uh, I have to get the, I haven't swapped the rear gears yet, so I have to do that. I got the gears in and everything, the four tens in the rear. Once I do that, we'll uh, go out and put it in four low and do some filming. But until then, thanks for watching, guys. Thank mm -hmm. you.